Hi, I'm Marcus. I'm the Eastside video editor. And today I have with me Crystal and Gina. Crystal is the freshman class president. Gina is the sophomore class president. And I'm just, I'm going to be asking them questions, trying to just get a basic feel and idea of how the school year is going to go. So let's start. How was the process for um, like selecting you guys different this year? I'm sure Gina will probably have a better answer than this because Crystal is your first year, but how was selecting you guys as class presidents? How was it different than it's been in the past? So in the past, um, in the past, at least for upperclassmen elections, they happen mostly in the spring so that you could get prepared for the following uh, autumn. Right. And in the past, you would have speeches in the debate gym. You would be able to campaign in person and you would be able to make posters and put them up in the school. But this year, a lot of it um, really relied on social media presence and also the speeches were taken at the school, so speeches as well. Right. So, Crystal, you're very new to this whole process, this whole SGA thing, just high school in general. Do you think you, how, how should I phrase this? Is it, has it been hard adjusting to East and high school all remote, all because of COVID? For me personally, it hasn't been that hard to transition from middle school to high school, especially since I had a lot of guidance from my upperclassmen friends. And I've been trying to extend some of that guidance to some my other like freshman classmates if they don't have an upperclassman to like get help from. Awesome. So do you guys feel like you're at a disadvantage under the um, junior and senior presidents? Because Crystal, you haven't had any experience at East and Gina, you all haven't even had a full school year, school year. So there, there are a lot of things that happen towards the end of the school year you're probably like not. Um, Marcus, you're cutting out. Like I can't hear your audio. I just couldn't hear the last part of what Marcus said. Crystal, you're muted. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. All right, I think we're good now. What was the last part that you said with your question? Do you guys, basically, do you guys just feel like you're at a disadvantage under the junior and senior presidents because you haven't had as much experience in school? Do you feel as the class presidents, you feel like you're at a disadvantage? Crystal, do you want to go first or? Yeah, I, I can go first with this one. Um, I think this is a new experience for everyone. So it I don't think it's that much of a disadvantage. For me, I feel like it's the only disadvantage I have is like the is knowing how SGA normally runs things, like the procedures that SGA has to go through. Because at middle school it's normally run by the teachers, but in high school it's now like primarily focused on like student led activities. Yeah. But for other like major events, it's pretty new to everyone because now we have to adjust to like social distancing rules and whether it's good, whether our events will be online or not. Um, so for me, I just want to ask, what do you mean by like not having a full year of like experience? Like, could you elaborate what you meant by that? Well, la our school year last year got cut short by COVID. So you haven't had a full, you, you, I imagine you were an SGA last year. You have to be an SGA the previous year to be the president, is that correct? Yeah, I was the president last year. Oh, you were the president last year also? Yes. Yeah, so, you're right. Like, in terms of things like um, the finals and everything, no, I did not get to experience that. I think that in terms of a disadvantage, um, I don't have, have like, experience per se, 
um, in the sense that you're saying, but also like, you can look at it at a perspective where that me and Crystal are bringing in new ideas that may be more like jaded and more like like upperclassmen, um, like members of SJ might not have thought of. So it really depends on how you see it. I don't necessarily think it's a disadvantage for me personally. And um, sure, a lot of events are, um, the priority is definitely seniors first, which is understandable. But I think um, in terms of disadvantage, I don't really feel any. I think it's a really good way to look at it. So you mentioned that in middle school, SGA is a lot more like the staff kind of is very controlling in middle school. And you say now in high school, it's very different. Like you have the students actually have a much bigger role. They play a much bigger role in SGA. How, how would you say they do? Like what, what's your role as the president? And then the people below you, like the vice president and representatives, what do you guys really do behind the scenes to put everything together? And you're asking in terms of like middle school SGA, right? Well, I'm saying you said middle school, you don't have much input on everything. And now you're saying in high school, you have much more input. Like, what what is the input? What do you guys do to make All right, Chris, so that's more of a question for you. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've both had experience being like eighth grade president back at Rosa, but uh, since I had like the most recent experience with it, uh, I can say that just it's different as in there's more transparency between the teachers and the students, but there's still the same amount of like ideas coming through. I feel like it's more um, for the students. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm trying to think of a really, like a good way to word this, but back in middle school, it's more the teachers present the idea and then students can vote on it, the student representatives, but there was still, students were still able to input their own ideas. And now like this year, from my experience, it's more, we, we present the ideas first and then they the teachers approve approve it or not. Right. So you guys now, it wasn't much like that in middle school, but you guys now, you guys are the minds behind everything. You are the literal people suggesting all the ideas, and then it's up for the teachers to kind of just approve them. Um, well, in terms of like the ideas, right, of course, there are some things that you, you need to make sure you get done. For example, whole co reps for a whole coming game, um, getting apparel done, doing fundraisers. But um, so me and Crystal, we both went to Rosa and we're like when you removed. And I remember that part of the problem was also that um, the class presidents, I remember Crystal, they like picked in like the beginning of the school year, right? Or like the elections are in the spring. Oh, OK. Yeah. So like. The problem is also that in terms of like, events, a lot of us determine over summer, right? So like, by the time you come back to school and you're like, hey, let's do this thing, they're like, oh, no, sorry. We already have like things planned for the school year, and we can't do that. And um, for SGA, a lot of the things that we do is like a combination of what the teachers come up with and also the officers. For So for sophomores, the teachers came up with the goose chase, which is like an online scavenger hunt thing we're doing right now. And like in terms of um, things like fundraisers and like future events, we're kind of looking to the reps and the officers to come up with ideas. So does that answer your question? All right. <laughs> I can add on just a little bit, sorry. Uh, for freshmen, I, there's still like a presence of like the teachers like advising us, especially since we're like su super new to like the high school experience. So like they're helping us with like, when like they recommend when we should get certain uh, events done by or like, like HOCO, they reminded us of who needs to be there and like what's gonna go on there. So it's, helpful to have those teachers still there to like remind us and encourage us on what we can do and what we should do. Yeah, that was a, that was a perfect answer actually. So is it, 
hard collaborating with everybody, like the teachers, um, the representatives, the vice presidents, the other grades as well. Like as president, is it hard get making sure everybody's voice is heard? Um, do you mean that it's hard to get people's voices heard, or is it hard to collaborate with people on events? Is it hard to collaborate? Because I'm sure everybody's, everybody's, I'm sure, is throwing out all these ideas, and it's very hard to take them all in at once and, and keep them all in mind when you come up with an idea. So is that challenging? Um, in my experience, it does tend to be harder when you try to reach out to other grades because um, they usually have their own things going on. And sometimes they might not like, <laughs> it's like you don't really get much of a response, especially now that everything's kind of virtual. It's like, it's very easy to just leave people on read. Um, and I think that in terms of collaborating with people, like the advisor is not that hard because you have to be in constant uh, contact with them every, like, every single event, uh, most days you're in contact with them. In terms of the reps, um, it was easier last year because we saw them in person every single day. But now that like you don't really see them in person, there's almost like no impetus or like, there's no like, there's no like a few mandatory doing things, you know? So sometimes the reps might, you know, like understandably slack off on some things. But I mean, it's just challenges that you have to face as the president, you just roll up the punches. You know, so it's just part of your job, honestly. Yes, for collaboration, it can be hard, but sometimes it's good to just like get both of like both ideas and just work them together. And as long as you listen to them, I think the main point is listening to their ideas. And then if even if you disagree on things, you can just provide points on why you might think something is better than the other. And I think most people are able to come to like, the same level as understanding. And communication this year, I feel hasn't been that hard for me. It's, um, because we all have like each other's contacts and stuff and we're all pretty active on social media and just on our phones in general. So it's not hard to like talk with them. I feel like the only difficult thing is trying to get everybody together at one time, like in a meeting like this to discuss our ideas rather than over text because over text it can get a, a bit hectic and a little confusing. But I personally, in my experience, I don't think it's um, that difficult to collaborate with others as long as you're listening to people and organizing their thoughts and ideas. So basically what I'm getting is that collaborating with people it's not necessarily the easiest thing but with the more experience you have in SGA you learn how to handle it easier did I gather that correctly okay so that kind of brings me to the next question COVID's obviously placed a lot of limitations on just everything in the world and so you're saying now SGA primarily meets now over Zoom or talks through texts. Is it all done that way now? Is there anything that's like in person or like, how are those big decisions made now? Big SGA decisions for whatever, hey, what's the theme for the dance going to be? What's, what's the theme for Spirit Week going to be? How, how are those decisions made now that with COVID in the way? I can go first for this one. So, um, like formal decisions, I feel are it's more it's um sorry it's better to have it over a meeting with a group of people because then you have like live interaction and questions going on rather than over text. Like, I think text is more just to get the flow of ideas, just getting it rolling. But when you're on a meeting, it's more. Um, organized and it's easier to see everybody because I haven't like for um, ninth grade the class of 2024 SGA there haven't been any like in-person discussions because everybody is like super cautious about it and it's hard to get like um, a get together with 
a group of like 24 people. So we've been just managing with texts and calls and just hoping to see, uh, trying our best to see when everybody can come and like filling people in if they can't come. Um, in terms of the big decisions, you're going to want to talk to the uh, school by SJ, which includes Daniel Pipersberg, Max Gavin, and all the other uh, VPs. And so the way that um, things work with the bigger decisions is that usually the school SJ, the whole school by SJ will kind of gather ideas from uh, maybe Instagram and also the class officers. And then like according to like, you know, what limitations there are, um, they will make a decision based on that. I think that's one part of your question. Um, I think it was another part, but I uh, missed it. Could you reiterate what that was again? I mean, you guys did a pretty good job answering answering my question, regardless of whether you heard the whole thing or not. Basically, my idea was like COVID's put a lot of limitations in place, and is it hard? Not necessarily reaching out to people, but just communicating with people is it, it's it's obviously harder than it would be during the regular school year, correct? Um, yeah, of course it'd be harder, and of course, uh, COVID is going to bring a lot of like, limitations. But personally, while it is easy to kind of like dwell on like all oh, the negatives, and yeah, COVID absolutely sucks, like sucks but like sucks major but. But I also think that as a sophomore, like who came as a freshman last year with a big grand ideas, I want to do this, I want to do this. But then learning, there's like already like a system in place and there's like an order to do things. It's kind of bummed last year. But this year, it kind of opens the door to like new possibilities that could for, I could like in the future, like be like implemented into the future, right? So yeah, it sucks. Like we can't have our regular spirit week and stuff, but it forces everybody involved to kind of think outside the box as to how to include more people to participate in events and to spread the school spirit because that's what SJ really should be about as core. So I think, yeah, it does suck, but um, I think it's important to also focus on the positives as well. Yeah, and like positives include that COVID's really just an opportunity for us. Like on the brighter side, it's an opportunity us to think outside the box and like think more creatively about how we can incorporate ideas that are both virtual, in person, something that works for all students that like accommodates to how they see like the COVID situation. And this could honestly be work, this, these like ideas could honestly work for future events. Like what, even if we don't have like COVID next year, well, hopefully not next year, but we could like, at virtual events like the goose chases we could still do that because honestly i still i think they're fun whether or not they're we have school in person or um or hi hybrid excellent so these modified versions of like spear week and all the basic events that east would usually have what 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 are these what, what what are the modified versions of them looking like? What's the what's the timeline of the school year kind of looking like in terms of how we'll be able to do things differently? Oh, Chris, do you want to go first or like? I mean, it's up to you. Uh... <laughs> I mean, since I was I'm uh, this is my second year, I can uh, I'm answer not that question. I'm not familiar yet. Yeah. Yeah, so like last year we had, um, like the first thing we do as you become president is just a spirit week, right? And then you do the banner and you do the great dance and you do the um, booth. But now because of COVID, the school SGA is thinking about initially pushing it back. They push it back to April, but of course there is the chance that it still doesn't work out and, you know, uh, COVID is still here. So SGA, right now we actually just had a meeting today during lunch about that, which is what the heck are we going to do? Hmm, good question. So there's a lot of ideas being thrown around right now. For example, should we do like a whole school year spirit week and then like culminate it at, at like March? Should we like have like various events every single month or like every other week to like uh, facilitate like spirit and stuff? So right now, things are all up in the air. So if you are watching this, 
and you have an idea what you want to do for Spirit Week, make sure you shoot one of the officers a DM. Because honestly, like, there are no bad ideas right now. We are something, anything at all. Think outside the box. So, right now things are in the air, but we're starting to, like, mesh it out and plan it out. Yeah. That's good to hear. And um, our main focus of the meeting that we have today, and we're going to have another one tomorrow during lunch, uh, the main focus is just, like, the uh, big picture of how we're going to do it. It's not specifically, like, all the mechanical details of, like, what event is going to hold. And I know a lot of people are, are, like, excited about, I think, the Wing Bowl. I'm not sure what it's called, but Wing Bowl. Yeah. So even we're, like, trying to figure out the logistics of how that's going to work along with just other just long-term plans, like Gina was saying, if, like, Spirit Week is going to last the whole year or month to month, especially with the theme. We're not sure if we should split that up from month to month and have, like, sub-themes under that or have one long, like, theme and just branch off from that. But we have all ideas in the air right now. We're welcome to anything. And honestly, it's just, like, student input and just what the majority thinks and what they want because we're very split on – well, not very, but just we we have lots of uh, different ideas that we would like to have, like, an opinion on from the student body. Well, it seems like a lot of things are awfully confusing right now, but it seems like you guys seem to have a pretty good handle on all of them, all things considered. Um, it's been a lot of fun talking with you guys and getting kind of an inside scoop on what's going on in SGA with all these weird COVID parameters. Um, yeah, that's all. Yeah, yeah, so if you're watching this, make sure you follow your great Instagram. Make sure you are in your great Google Classroom. A lot of information, important things are going to be shared online virtually. And also, if you want district updates, there's a Cherry Hill newsletter that you can sign up for on the district website. If you want more information on hybrid and going back, there is the district website, and it's called Return to Learn. So a lot of resources out there, okay? Make sure you are gaining access to all of them. Crystal, do you have any last words to say? Yeah, any questions or ideas to anything we said, just shoot us a DM. I don't know, my texts are open. You could always ask, ask someone for my number or my Instagram, any of my socials. So, yeah. <laughs> awesome. It was great talking to you guys. Um, maybe we could do this again at some point if if anything changes or if things start to open up more we could check in again and see how things are going yeah of course and i think it'll also be a good idea for east side if you guys want like a bigger picture like uh look you guys should got, uh, get in contact with the school officers they would probably be able to give like a more like um behind the scenes answers to some things that are going on sounds like a plan all right all right then good talking to you guys Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you for having us. Yeah. Bye-bye.